what I want to do today is introduce you to the concept of a tuple, or really how we use tuples to locate points inside of what we'll call a cube space, a, basically a complex space. If you can grasp that concept, then hopefully um, you're on the path to, to have that uh, kind of aha moment of your own where MDX makes sense and you can start making better use of it. Okay, so with that, let's, let's get started. Well, let's get my mouse responding. Here we go. So we're going to start with a really simple concept, one we all learned back in elementary school. It's the concept of a number line. So here we have a line extending in two directions. Um, along the line, we've marked various intervals and simply labeled those with, with integer values so that we have uh, a mark in the center at 0, and then heading off to the right, marks at 1, 2, 3, 4, and in the left, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, and so on. Um, if I were to speak to somebody about this line and identify, want to identify a point on the line, let's say that I wanted to tell somebody that there was, a, in this case, a flying saucer, but there was a point, uh, there was something at the point 3 along this line, I could easily do that using a single coordinate system. I would simply write the number 3, wrap it in parentheses, and that's how I locate that point on a single line. Okay? Really basic concept. If I add another line, a couple things happen. One is I now have to talk about a horizontal and a vertical line, and, and those are you know, odd ways to reference the axis. Let's just give them simple names. We'll say the, the horizontal is x, the vertical is y. The other thing that happens is I now have created a two-dimensional space. If I want to describe to somebody that there's a point in this space, I do it using a two-part or double uh, coordinate. So in this case, there's a flying saucer that sits at the intersection of 3 and 2, and so I use a double coordinate of 3, 2, wrapped in parentheses, to, to locate that point relative to the x and y axes. Again, really simple concept. We all explored this in elementary school. Um, so let's take it one step further. I'm going to add a third axis to this. Okay? So it's very hard to, and you're seeing some of my lame humor come in. You're, get used to it. There's more to come. Um, so I've got a third axis. We're going to give it a name because, honestly, I don't know how else I would describe it. We'll call this third axis the Z axis. And now, instead of a two-dimensional space, I have a three-dimensional space. To locate a point in this three-dimensional space, I use a three-part or triple coordinate system. So if there's a flying saucer sitting in this three-dimensional space at the intersection of three from the off the x, two off the y, and four off the z, I could communicate this to somebody by saying that there's a point of interest at three comma two comma four and wrap that in parentheses, and folks will understand how to locate that point within this three-dimensional space. Okay. Let's go another step. Let's add a fourth axis. Okay, so we add a fourth axis, and all of a sudden we hit a wall. As human beings, we're not really good at visualizing four-dimensional spaces. There are some individuals who, who say they can do this. I am not one of those. Um, so for me, three dimensions is about as, as far as I can go. But if we keep with the pattern that we were using before, it's no big deal to locate a point in this space. All I have to use is a four-part coordinate system. So when I had one number line, I used a single coordinate. When I had two lines, I used a double coordinate. Three lines, a triple coordinate. Now that I have four number lines or four axes, I now use a quadruple coordinate. Here's the problem. I've run out of names. Okay? This is a really simple problem to address. So what we're going to do is we're just simply going to rename our axes, axis 1, axis 2, axis 3, and axis 4. And now I've got a really simple mechanism to locate a point in a four-dimensional space. Again, I can't visualize this. That's just my limitation. Um, but no big deal. I can still find a point. Okay? Let's take it one step further. So to locate a point in a four-dimensional space, we just tacked on a fourth, uh, a fourth axis reference inside of our coordinate. I can go add five, six, seven, eight. I can go on like this forever, um, adding additional axes to these, this space, making it more and more complex. And while I'm getting further and further away from the ability to visualize all this, no big deal. 
I can always locate a point in this space using an appropriately sized coordinate. So no matter how big the space, um, I would simply use a coordinate system reflecting the number of axes. So if I had an n number of axes or an n-dimensional space, I would simply use an n-dimensional coordinate system. Um, n-dimensional coordinate system isn't the easiest thing to communicate to folks. And if you want to sound really geeky and cool, um, it's a great way to speak. But for our purposes, we're going to shorten this and just call this a tuple. So an n-dimensional coordinate system is just a tuple. It's a means by which we can locate a point in an n-dimensional space. Okay. Hopefully at this point that, that, that's making sense, right? It may be a little abstract, but we built up from a single to a double to a triple and then to higher levels, um, leveraging this very simple mechanism. And regardless of the complexity, we can locate a point. And that really is the objective of MDX. The whole purpose of working with MDX is to locate and reference points within a, a cube space, and which means I just blew my next, uh, <laughs> my next little bit of humor. So what about analysis services? Well, we already gave this away. Um, in analysis services, we're focused on issuing queries against cubes. Okay? The cube is an n-dimensional space. And so the purpose of writing an MDX statement is to locate a point in that space. And at that point, there's data that's stored, um, information about sales, information about um, you know, finances, the books, information about various parts of our organization that we want to understand. Now, this n-dimensional space that's formed by this cube um, has axes. Those axes are attribute hierarchies. Right? So every attribute hierarchy associated with the cube forms an axis in the n-dimensional cube space. Okay. The, along the, the every axis, we place the individual members of the attribute hierarchy to basically denote points along that, that axis. Okay. So we have, let's say we have a cube with, I don't know, 20 dimensions. Each of those has maybe 10 attributes. I've got 200 axes that I'm dealing with. And we're going to add one more. We had one more axis, and along that axis, we're going to locate our individual measures. Okay? Now, this is actually fudging just a little bit, but it's, it's a bit of a simplification. Still, though, conceptually, this is going to work for us. So let's imagine we have one additional axis for our measures, and all of our measures, regardless of what measure groups they're associated with, sit along that axis. Okay? So our cube that had 200 attribute hierarchies has 201 axes, that, that 201st being for measures. All right, so let's build up a cube space much like we built up uh, the n-dimensional spaces in the previous uh, set of slides. So here we have an attribute hierarchy. This is our category attribute hierarchy within the product dimension. 